to South Africa now in day three of the murder trial of Blade Runner Oscar Pistorius. The Paralympian arriving in court this morning after two days of testimony from neighbors, all with essentially the same story. Pistorius breaking down in tears as witnesses all testify hearing screams before the gunshots that killed his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp. The testimony, of course, raises doubts over Pistorius' own story and that he thought she was an intruder. Another witness also coming forward saying Pistorius asked his friend to take the fall for a separate gun charge he also faces stemming from a restaurant shooting. Here's the testimony. I don't know what happened, how the gun went off, but he did apologize and say, I'm so sorry it was a mistake. Is, are you okay? Is everybody okay? I do remember Oscar saying, please, to Darren, just, just say it was you. I, I, don't want, I don't want any tension around me. Just say it was you. And then once that, that was said, the people from the restaurant came to the table, and then that's when Darren said it was him. Joining me now, our legal panel, Anna Yum is a former prosecutor. Phil Snyder is a criminal defense attorney. That reckless discharge of a firearm charge, it's also part of this case, Anna. It would seem, you know, insignificant or less than significant when a guy is already facing a murder charge. But you say it's very um, crucial, I guess, for the prosecution to include that charge. Why? Absolutely, John. I think it was extremely smart and strategical for the prosecution to add the negligent and reckless discharge of a firearm. Because if you think about it, this murder case really stems upon Oscar Pistorius's credibility. He's making it seem like this was an accident and he thought it was an intruder. Well, with his friend, his own friend saying, actually, Oscar asked me to take the fall, it really showcases to the judge that maybe Oscar Pistorius is not as honest as you might think that he is. And it makes her question, well, if he's asking his friend to take the blame because he wants to avoid some kind of culpability. It really delivers a damaging blow to his credibility, which is at issue in the murder case. We talked yesterday about the testimony from a woman who said that she heard screams before the gunshots. Her husband also testified. Uh, let's play some of that, and then, Phil, I want to get your reaction. All I can offer you is that I heard screaming. You don't know if it was long before the shots or short before the shots. You only remember screaming. Is that correct? It was. It's. It's difficult to judge the the um, amount of time that lapsed. So, and and my short might be your long. Yes. So I, I don't want to peg a time on it. It was. <laughs> there were the screams, and then the shots started. Yep. So, Phil, he is one of three neighbors who are saying he heard screams and then gunshots. Doesn't that do a lot to destroy Oscar Pistorius' defense? That, you know, the state's witness is the most powerful witness that they are going to present at trial, and that's very common. You have primacy and recency, so they put their best witness up front. Now, for Oscar's defense to hold water, their expert is going to have to show either one of two things. One is that it is impossible for someone to hear sounds and differentiate sounds between a woman and a man over the equivalent of two football fields, or two, based on the state's theory that the, the gunshots went off and after they heard Reva scream, that an expert will say that that is physically impossible. Short of one of those two experts saying that, I think that these witnesses carry significant weight because they have no agenda to lie and it crushes Oscar's defense. Anna, his, his team would have the court believe, I guess, that it was the sound of him beating down the door with a cricket bat. Now, I've heard gunshots. I've heard, you know, baseball bats using, being used to, to whack heavy items. They don't sound much alike. That's exactly right, John. And I think that's what the witness was saying, especially when the neighbor said, I know what a gunshot sounds like. And what I heard was gunshots. It wasn't the sound of a cricket bat hitting a door, especially as if you think about the distance, we're talking about, what, 190 yards between Oscar Pistorius' house and the neighbor. And also, if you think about it, John, I think it's a red herring because can, facts show that Riva Steenkamp was shot multiple times. So there, there's no dispute that, sh that multiple gunshots were fired, which is consistent with what the neighbors are saying. I really think that's a red herring by the defense, and I think they're trying to use what they have, but they're not really making any kind of effective leeway. Well, the case goes on. We will continue to watch it. Anna Yum, Phil Snyder, thank you both. Thanks, John.